Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 17 of Grim Scenarios. Hey, when you catch episode 18 next week, don't ask questions about how Milk and I are wearing the same clothes. It's probably nothing. Probably nothing. <laughs> How's it going today, Milk? Yeah, I'm doing all right, Emma. Doing all right. It's been a, it's been an interesting week, but uh, you know, we're all still having fun playing some silly games of Clock Tower. That's right. Uh, and as we continue our series of requested scripts, we're getting to catfishing. Now, the characters were requested for catfishing were Dreamer and Amnesia. We had two requests for catfishing, and these are both characters we've already covered. So we don't know if we're going to come back and do both of them on catfishing again, but we are going to do one episode of catfishing now with one of the requested characters and, of course, an evil character. So, Milk, you're playing as the Dreamer. Ooh, the Dreamer. I've done Dreamer on Dream Scenarios before, but you haven't. You've run a Grand Dreamer Scenario, so talk to me a little bit about how you like to approach the Dreamer. Yeah, Dreamer's really, really interesting, because, you know, it's it's one of those roles that it gets really good information, but you have to be able to parse it, because you're always going to be shown one good and one evil, and usually... The storyteller is going to uphold evil bluffs, right? And they're usually going to uh, try to make sure that all of the potential evil roles are covered. So if they want to frame somebody as the demon, you're going to see a demon, right? If they, if you know that there's a Saranovis in play, you might see a Saranovis. So tracking that information back to its source becomes tricky. Um, I like to use it to confirm characters I've already gotten claims from, or alternately to suss out to suss out people who seem suspicious mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense to me yeah now milk last week on grim scenarios you traded in 28 points for a certificate and i do want to ask you do you want to use your significant certificate now or would you prefer to hold it no i'd prefer to hold it thanks that makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. thank you very much no problem <laughs> so we'll continue um so milk uh I'm going to tell you a few things happened on night one, which is, first of all, you were woken up and told there was a widow in play. Hmm. There's a widow in play. So I have received the widow ping. You have received the widow ping. Now, what, what trickery does that have put you under as a, as a, as a dreamer? Right. So there's, there's two elements of the widow ping. If people believe it, right, that means that I'm a confirmed good. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when someone has heard a widow ping, they will come out to the town because the evil team is already going to know all the roles in the script uh, on, the, on the grim. That said, the widow doesn't know who received the evil ping and being a confirmed good is a good way to get yourself killed. So when you get the widow ping, the customary thing to do is to just come out with it right away in town. That's very trustworthy, that's very believable, but that's also likely to make you a target. Either for framing or for killing. Plus, Dreamer is a widow bluff. So that's the second part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Dreamer is an obvious widow bluff. When you use it to find out people's roles and try to confirm to them up front like an undertaker, right? then it's going to look like you're a widow. So already knowing that there's a widow in play, already knowing that I have the widow ping, um, I have to think about a couple of things. The first thing I have to do is sharing this might make town suspicious of me. But not sharing it and then coming out with it later is going to be very suspicious. So this actually plays into the way that I like to play Dreamer quite well, which is looking at characters who've already claimed to me or have claimed something to me to see if they're lying or telling the truth and to see what evils they might be. Because, quite frankly, although it's useful to kill any evil player, it's best to kill things like pit hags and demons. So I'm going demon hunting with my dreamer ability. Okay, well, talking about your dreamer ability, let's go to the Grim. So on night one, you selected seat 10 mm -hmm. because you wanted to know what they are. They're a player who you can't really trust their day one claims or their day two claims or their day three claims. They like to lie 
possibly excessively. Um, so you wanted to know, you knew you weren't going to get a real claim from them, so you wanted to know what they might be doing to you. Yeah. And you saw Lunatic or Godfather. Okay. Um, so, first thing is... So, tell me what you, what you, how you read a Lunatic Godfather thing. Right. <clears throat> so, the first, the, the first thing here is, your night one pick, like with many roles, is blind, right? So, doing it on socials is it makes a lot of sense. You pick somebody that you can't, you think is hard to read or that never tells the truth or, you know, you, you make your own choice about what to do. A lunatic godfather uh, selection is interesting. And the reason it's interesting is because the godfather as a character is going to know what outsiders are in play, which means that the godfather might have given a minus one and they might be bluffing an out-of-play outsider, right? Alternatively, they might be the lunatic. And if they are the lunatic, then they're not going to be claiming to be an outsider, most likely. A godfather is going to, you know, potentially try to look like a lunatic on that day. So the trick with Day One Dreamer is that the storyteller doesn't know what the evil team is bluffing yet. That's the big vulnerability of evil to the dreamer the later in the game it gets the more likely you are as the dreamer to get the evil team's bluffs when you look at them but on night one you're definitely getting the storyteller's best guess about what the about what the the evil player is bluffing as right so so to me right seeing a lunatic slash godfather means a couple of things the first thing is it's not the demon so, on some level, I don't actually need to worry about killing this player. Uh, the second thing is, either way, I know there's some kind of, there's something going on with outsiders in this game. Right? So, that's, that's also useful to know. And then, part three of this is, if I go to that player and they're claiming to be a different outsider than lunatic, or they're not, you know, doing demony things, um then I know it's probably the Godfather and the storyteller just guessed wrong on their bluff. Okay. That's that's that's, that's a pretty solid answer. I'll give you two points for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's two points for milk so far. Great. I probably missed something there, but, you know, we're doing our best. Yeah, yeah I would say that you, you talked about how it might be a Godfather minus one, but on this script in particular, with the... With the intentionally hard to pin down outsider count, it could even be a godfather plus one, and Lunatic is the fifth out-of-play outsider. It's very true. Yeah. It could be godfather Fangu, or godfather balloonist. Or godfather balloonist. Yeah, and you could have five outsiders in play, and the god and the Lunatic is the free one. Yeah, or four outsiders in play, yeah. Right, and you'd never... Yeah, four, excuse me, four outsiders in play, the drunk is in play, and you would have to then identify the drunk. There's a lot of information in that, though. There's a lot yeah, of information. Yeah, I thought it was a solid answer, but you you focused on the Godfather minus one without talking about the Godfather plus one, so that docked you down from the full three points to the two. Very well, Emma, very well. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, are you a run straight to your pain type of dreamer? Nah, I'm not in a hurry to talk to that. I'm not in a hurry to talk to that person. It's not going to make a difference. The storyteller has already told me what they're going to tell me about that player. I don't need to run over and talk to them right away. Okay. So on daybreak, you notice that shortly after whispers open, C10 goes off to speak to the storyteller. C10 goes off to talk to the storyteller. And that's interesting, because if C10 is going off to talk to the storyteller, that means they're probably um, the lunatic um, bluffing something like savant or amnesiac, um, and so that might be one of that might be one of the bluffs that they've been given. Um, if they're the godfather, then they're bluffing. So, a real lunatic is probably going to go try to talk to other people, not necessarily go try to set up a, a bluff immediately, but that's up to the player. So there's no way we can really matter that. Um, but it is interesting that they, instead of going to talk to their minions or going and talking to other players and seem you know unsuspicious, they've gone off to, to use, a, use a bluff. So that's that's interesting. So who would you like to talk to? You can talk to everyone. Yeah, we'll talk to seat two. Seat two. Oh, and also, do you announce the Widow thing? No, not immediately. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, seat two says, hey, how's it going, Milk? Hey there, seat two. Uh, I'm doing okay. How about you? They go, uh, not bad. I was a little happy that no one heard a widow's call, because I think if there was a widow's call, we should probably just kill me today to be safe. Uh, why? What are you? Well, I'm the grandmother. I'm not going to tell you who I saw or what, but, like, if there's a widow in play, they can just murder my grandchild at night because they know who it is. Yeah, so I will tell you that there is a widow's call. Uh, I'm holding it a little bit, uh, but I did hear the widow's call last night. They go, oh, great, then let's kill me immediately. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I'm just going to trust you because, I mean, saying that you just want to be killed if there's a widow, widow's call, you're probably, you're probably not an evil in that, in that situation. They go, I'm certainly not an evil. Yeah. Just your little old grandmother. Yep. Uh, do you mind telling me uh, what you saw? I don't care about who you saw. They go, I'm going to keep that to myself. Uh, if you're evil, I don't want to, like, feed you the grandchild. That's fair. Uh, I'm the dreamer. Uh, so that's the reason that part of the reason I'm holding the widow, like the widow paying a little bit is because obviously that just looks like I'm, I could just be the widow or I could just be like a self poisoning widow or I could be an evil faking widow. So C2 goes, suddenly I feel the desperate need to not be talking to the widow milk. Goodbye. Good day, sir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is what happens when you, when you have this situation, but you know, that word will get out eventually. I'll get killed for it. But dreamer info, the later you get in the game is also you know, maybe less less useful anyway. So, um, it's the first two or three days that I'm mostly worried about. Okay. Uh, I'll go talk to C12, my other neighbor. All right, C12 says, "Hey, how's it going, Milk?" Hello, C12. How are you? They go, "Not bad, not bad." What you feel like doing, Milk? Um, I'm playing my role face up uh, in this game uh, because I'm the dreamer. Uh, and so um, I thought I would just tell you that up front and ask you what you would prefer. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay, Milk, I'll play this game. Uh, dream me tonight. Dream me tonight, and I'm curious to know what you'll get. Dream you tonight, and you're curious to know what I'll get. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell you anything. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to tell me anything. Um, also, there's a widow in play, just so you know. They go, oh, there's a widow in play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're the dreamer? You expect anyone to believe this horseshit, Mill? No, that's why I didn't say it out loud in the middle of town. I'm just telling people who seem trustworthy in private conversations. They go, oh, yeah, me. I'm trustworthy. Yeah, you seem trustworthy, so you can spread it around if you'd like. Okay. Uh, who do you want to talk to next? Oh, let's go to seven, since they're all the way over there. Seat seven. Okay. Seat seven says, hey, Milk, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Not bad. Uh, I'm the Raven Keeper. Okay. Uh, can I gamble you as that? They go, uh, they have a slightly panicked look to their voice, but they go, um, y yeah, I can't think of a good reason why not. Are you sure? Because, I mean, it's okay. You can just tell me you lied to me, and you don't have to be the Raven Keeper. I want to be very clear. I'm not lying to you. I am the Raven Keeper. Uh, okay, okay. And you're okay to be gambled? Yes. Okay, sounds good. I think they go, uh, but I'm sure you can find something better than confirming a Raven Keeper, right? No, I mean, confirming a Raven Keeper is really powerful, right? Because that's a great way to... That's a, that's a great way uh, to prove that someone who would be a, a super frame... Um, for the evil team, um, yeah, to to figure out, you know, to like to get confirmed and not get framed later. So that that seems like a really good thing to gamble you as. They go, yeah, it's all very persuasive. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a widow in play. They go, uh huh. Someone told me the widow ping. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Bye. They leave. Well, that person seems really sad about being the snake charmer, probably. <laughs> Just go ahead and... Alright, uh, seat uh, five wants to talk to you. Okay, seat five. Seat five goes, some milk, there's a widow in play. How do you know? Did you get the ping? No, well, sort of. Mm. I was told there was a widow in play. Oh, you're the grandchild. Okay, cool. They go, nope. 
who told you the widow was in play then? The storytellers, Milk. Oh, you were told there's a widow in play by the storytellers. Yeah. No, at like before the game started. What are you claiming? Oh, I'm the gambler. I can't wait to catch you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the I'm the gambler. Yeah, the the other side of the ping said that too. What ping? The widow ping, Milk. Oh, oh, you mean? Oh, I see. You didn't hear the widow's call. You're you're the you're the investigator. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were claiming to have heard the widow's call. Uh, see, I was a little. No, confused. I'm claiming that you're the widow. You mind telling me who the other? You mind telling me who the other ping is? No, because if I were the widow, I would. I mean, if I were the widow, I would know. Think you're just double claiming them for sport. Oh, I'm just double claiming them for sport. Cool. Uh, well, in that case, I'm the dreamer, and I heard the widow, and I heard the widow's call. So there you go, investigator. Go, Jesus Christ, Milk! You're just the widow, aren't you? Nope, not the widow. And you have time for one more conversation. Oh, let's talk to Seat Ten now. Seat Ten goes, "Hey, Milk, uh, just trying to work on my amnesiac ability. I was told I affected setup last night." You are you affected setup? Interesting. Yeah, um, I affected setup. Cool. What other bluffs did you see? They go, I didn't see bluffs on the amnesiac. The amnesiac isn't told bluffs. Okay. Uh, and you're you're not looking at a demon token right now. You don't you don't think you're the demon in any way, shape, or form. Mm, no, I think I'm the amnesiac milk. That's the token I have. Okay. Cool. Uh. Just so you know, I dreamed you last night. I'm the dreamer. It's a widow game, and I saw you as the lunatic or the godfather. They go, uh, interesting. So you might want to work that out for yourself. You're drunk because I'm the amnesiac. Okay, great. If you're the amnesiac, then I was drunk on the first night. It's good to know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just the drunk. That'd be fun too. Okay, you, you get back to town. Uh, seat 5 nominates you and says, This guy's the widow. Uh, it gets five votes. We should kill your other ping, probably seat 5. Seat 5 goes, Why would we could kill you, the widow? Yeah, but we could just kill all of all three of us. I'm fine with killing all three of us. The other one's good. I got a good social read on them and you're evil. Right, but we could just kill all three of us because it's an investigator ping. So one of the three of us is definitely evil, and that's the best thing for town. So why don't we just nominate you or your ping? See, two nominates themselves. They shoot you a dirty look and say, uh, I think this is a widowed game, and I think that makes me a liability to continue going in town, so I'd like to kill myself tonight. I think we should actually kill seat two. I'm all for it. Uh, seat two gets easily gets like seven or eight votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are on the look. Hopefully the cannibal gets a grandchild, is what I'm saying. Uh, seat, uh, 12 nominates seat 4 and says, got a bad vibe off seat 4. Seat 4 goes, I'm good. Doesn't get anywhere near 7 votes. Yeah, no need to lift the grandmother, certainly. Uh, the grandmother's executed and dies, and everyone goes to sleep. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, milk. Uh, you're woken up, and you can pick a player to dream of. Well, there's a couple of things to think about here. C12 was okay being dreamed, so having been okay being dreamed suggests that probably don't need to worry about dreaming them yet. C7 was shifty, so let's dream C7, who's claiming to be the Raven Keeper. Uh, you dream C7, and you see... Ravenkeeper, or Fangu. Hmm, interesting. So, that could be the Fangu, um, being shifty about being gambled. If I die, that makes them not, if they don't hit an outsider, that makes them, you know, not not in good shape, necessarily. Um, also, I haven't died tonight, which is good. Um... I have to think about whether or not I'm drunk or widow poisoned, but that's a solution for later. So we saw this person. Let me just put Fangu or Ravenkeeper. Fangu, mm-hmm. Arcade. So what does the Ravenkeeper Fangu? Go tell me a little bit your thought process. Ravenkeeper's there. a great bluff for a Fangu, right? Because a Fangu is inevitably at some point going to die in the night. They can claim Ravenkeeper 
uh, when they die in the night, and then point at another player and confirm them. They confer- can confirm a minion to make a minion look good. They can confirm uh, uh, the person that they jumped to if they want to, although that's pretty pretty obvious. Um, or they can uh, they can uh, point at a good player and frame them. So Raven Keeper is a great bluff for any um, evil that's going to um, any evil that's that's likely to die, right? Uh, Vigor Mortis uh, loves Raven Keeper as a bluff because he can give it to a minion and the minion can die and confirm the Vigor Mortis or can or, you know frame a good player. Mm-hmm. Gambler is another great bluff for Fangus and uh, Vigor Mortises, right? Anything that can die in the night, farmer, like anything that can die in the night and um, confirm something or give information by dying makes a really, really good bluff for evils that want to die or, you know, evils that will, re- you know, any any evil role that results in evil dying. Imps, Fangus, Vigor Mortises, they're all, they all love Raven Keeper, Gambler, Farmer, stuff like that. So a, ra- a person who's bluffing Raven Keeper who is like, yeah, I'm okay to be gambled, but then is really shifty about it and then gets shown as Fangu Raven Keeper, that looks a lot like I caught a demon. Um, the downside is, uh, nobody in town's probably going to believe me because I look like a widow right now. So okay. I have to navigate. Well, that. you wake up and you find that seat four has been killed in the night. There you go. Damn, this happens to me every time I get this roll. I get one ping and then I die in the night. One ping and then I die in the night. They're claiming balloonist. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So Balloonist is also another good... Oh, sorry. Good... Your answer on that, I thought, was very strong. I'll give it three points. Thank you. That's five points total. Uh, Balloonist is also a great Fangu bluff, by the way, uh, because they will naturally add a... Uh, they will naturally add an outsider in, so it looks like they're confirmed, but it's better uh, if Fangu doesn't jump, so Balloonist uh, makes a pretty good Godfather bluff as well. Um, why a Godfather would die in the night in what might be a Fangu game is unclear, so maybe it's a Vigor game... Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, who do you want to talk to today? Um, I think I want to talk to... Let's talk to... Seat 6. Hey, you talk to Seat 6. Seat 6 goes, Hey, how's it going, Milk? What's up with you this game? Yeah, oh, um, I didn't really want to announce it out loud to everybody in town, but I did hear a widow's call and telling people individually as I go around uh, the the um, town. They go, yeah, I've heard you are the widow, so it makes sense that you have the widow's call. Whatever. I mean, if I'm the widow, why would I be saying I heard a widow's call? Someone else would have heard the widow's call. So that just makes me the self-poisoning widow, which is... Yeah, yeah, we think you're the self-poisoning widow weak. who is bluffing Dreamer. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, it's a terrible choice. Nobody's going to look, feel really dumb after this game about thinking that about me. They go, anyway, uh, you probably already know my role. Yeah, you might as well just tell me. If I'm the wi- Here's the thing. If I'm the widow, I already know your role. And if I'm not the widow, I have the widow's call, in which case you should just tell me because the evil team already knows your role. They go, well, if you can bring me on board, that's cool. I'm, uh, I'm the sweetheart. Oh, okay, great. I'll let the Fangu know to jump to you. They go, yeah, yeah, uh, that'd be pretty awesome. I like being the demon. Yeah, as long as I know it's coming. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that we'll uh, we'll be able to set that up for you. So don't vote on me. Uh, you get back to town. There's apparently a long conversation. C10 is saying, "Guys, I think I'm the lunatic. Uh, I tried to kill Milk last night, and it didn't work out for me." Interesting. So, what this feels like to me is that that player is probably the godfather. Um, They decided to go with the savant bluff, and the storyteller thought that they were going to bluff lunatic. It's possible that they... It's possible that they... um, It's possible that they're just the lunatic who wasn't shown me as a minion. I claimed dreamer to them, and they tried to kill the dreamer. Um, it's one of those two things. No way to know. No, really. But it could be could be a Godfather that I caught in a in a mis, mis bluff. Okay. 
Uh, do you want to talk to anyone else today? Mm, um, who voted on me? It doesn't really matter. I'll talk to seat three. We'll talk to people. We'll just try to fill out. Uh, I'll tell you that seat three, seat five, seat ten, three, five, ten, eight, and four voted on me. Okay. Uh, is that too many? Three, four, five, eight, and nine. That's exactly right. Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, we'll we'll talk to seat three. I'm probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna live very long in this game, so I might as well just talk to some of the other players. In fact, it might be better for me to get killed here. Um, I might be the drunk. I don't think I'm the drunk. Seat three yeah. goes. Well, look, I have some bad news for you. It looks like you're the widow. Hey, everybody seems to think that, which probably means it's true. Yeah, I mean, I gambled the investigator last night and lived. So, oh, you're the gambler. I just know you're the widow. Oh, are you the other ping? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then you obviously have the grim already, so you already know I'm the dreamer. They go. No, the gambler doesn't have the grim milk. That's mm. not how gambler works. Oh, sure. That sounds right, widow. Uh, anyway, uh, well, if you're the other ping and you gambled the investigator and they're not the drunk, uh, then it sounds like uh, they should just kill me and you. They go, we'll just kill you. You're the widow. And why don't you gamble me as the widow then? They go, sure, I'm going to gamble you as the widow tonight and see what happens. Or you could gamble me as the dreamer and live. It's up to you. Mm, but you're not the dreamer. You're the widow. Mm, I'm pretty sure that's not true. Uh, this conversation is not going to be productive, so I guess I'll go elsewhere. <laughs> All right, you have time for one more conversation if you want it. Uh, yeah, I don't particularly need another conversation at this point. I've probably found the majority of the evil team at this point. Oh, and who's on that evil team? Right now, I'm thinking it's seat three is the widow, uh, seat seven is the fangu, and seat ten might be the godfather, could be the lunatic. I mean, I could use more information probably, but. Um, the investigator could be the drunk, but I think that makes the gambler evil in almost... The gambler's evil in almost every world, I think, now. I'm gonna make a note of 3710, and we'll score that later. Oh, great. Yeah, great, you're gonna score it off of me just guessing randomly? Uh, we'll talk to seat 8, just cause. Alright, uh, you talk to seat 8. They go, hey, you haven't heard any outsiders this game, Milk? I actually think it's probably too cute by half for you to be the widow here, so I think you're probably just good. Wild. Someone who actually trusts me? Unbelievable. I finally found you, seat 8. Yeah, uh, well, uh, like there's players I trust more. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you and everybody watching this podcast, I don't waste my poison on myself unless there's a goblin on the script. They go, that's 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 fair. Uh, I my seat two is my grandmother. Seat seven is my current grandchild. Would like to execute an evil to get through the day. Oh, are you the, are you the cannibal? Yeah, I'm the Philo cannibal. Philo cannibal, wild. Okay, cool. That's that's pretty fun actually. They go, uh, yeah, so I've I've heard the public lunatic claim my grandchild's an outsider and C12 is claiming the recluse. So I'm starting to think we have too many outsiders. Uh, well, there's a dead balloonist and probably a fangu or a godfather. They go, yeah. So have you, ever, have you heard of outsiders? Six, six is a sweetheart, I think. They go, yeah, so I think four outsiders just feels like it, it feels off to me. And C12 gave me some weird vibes. I think I want to kind of want to kill seat twelve today, if that's okay with you. If you're, if you'd be on board with that. Yeah, I'm on board with killing seat twelve. Um, a recluse isn't isn't going to hurt town. Seat seven knows I'm good because I know their role. Um, yeah. Seat two knows I'm good, so I just like to get seat twelve out of here. You won't get great information off of seat twelve, unfortunately, but it'll replace grandmother so that you don't die when your grandchild dies. So. Yeah, and if they're evil, it's you know I'll trade killing an evil for some information. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, I think three might be evil as well. They're the other side of the investigator ping. The investigator could just be widow poisoned, though. I'm not sure where the widow would be in this case. Uh, by the way, a seat seven is the mutant. Seat seven is the mutant. Okay. That so they're, that's if they're in, like, if you hear them, they're in like double claims or anything. I got I... them as my mutant grandchild, so I'm just gonna tell people this so they leave them alone. Okay, so unless you think their fangu has jumped. So I got them as a uh, fangu raven keeper. They go, huh? Maybe you're just the widow poisoned dreamer. I could be the widow poisoned dreamer. You could be the widow poisoned cannibal. I think we just kill seat seven. They go, no, they're my grandchild. Why are we killing my grandchild? Well, if we kill your grandchild, then you still can't die in the night because your grandchild will be yeah, dead. Yeah, but I want to, they're good. I, I'm confirming them. I'm going to protect them. I want to kill C12. They're giving me the heebie-jeebies. You could be widow poisoned. 
Why one of the two of us is widow poison? Killing seat seven proves that it's not me. They don't. I. I I don't see logic. If we kill seed seven and the game continues, right? You saw them as the Fangu or the Raven Keeper. That doesn't prove you're not widow poisoned. That proves you are likely widow poisoned. If they come out and say that they're the mutant after they're dead, then that proves I'm likely the widow poisoned. Well, yeah, but we could kill seed twelve, who I think is evil, instead of seed seven, who I think is good. Sure, but from my perspective, killing seat twelve proves nothing. You're just going to get shown a minion because they're the recluse. So if we kill seat seven. That makes it look like the. Uh, that makes it look like uh, that. That way, we find out if they if they claim mutant the next day, then we know that I'm poisoned. There's really not that many sources of poison here, so oh I would be widow. Oh my God, Milk, you are the widow, aren't you? You just want a fangu jump to my sweet grandbaby, don't you? No, I don't want to. I want to kill your sweet grandbaby. I don't want to jump to them. I'm I'm actively advocating to kill seat seven. They go, okay, okay, and they leave. Oh, interesting. How interesting. Uh, so the investigator is widow poisoned. It's a vigor game? Alright. Well, you go back to town, seat 8, as they said they wanted to nominate seat 12. They says, I think we have too many outsiders in this game. I think seat 12 has a high chance of just being a minion bluffing outsider. They were sort of... They seem to know things they shouldn't know, too. I'd like to kill them today. I think they're probably the pit hag who got the room from the widow. I mean, I'm not going to vote on it. Well, it gets five votes without you. Uh, seats three, five, seven, eight, and ten all vote on seat twelve. I'll nominate seven. You nominate seat seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the dreamer. This is a widow game. Uh, I dreamed seat seven as the Fangu or the Raven Keeper. Um... They have been seen by another player as the mutant. Uh, I think that either I'm the widow poison here, and they are uh, probably the mutant, uh, or uh, I have seen them as the fangu and caught them in a bluff. Either way, I think killing them helps us find the widow poison. They go, what are you talking about? I'm the grandmother confirmed raven keeper. Usually me as the raven keeper. I'm clearly just good here. That's my that's my nomination. I mean, that's all I got. I'll no, vote on it. no one else votes with you. Of course, no one else votes with me. That's fine. I might be wrong. C twelve is executed and dies. All right, milk. So you wake up. Uh, oh, sorry. Before you go, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look at eight. All right, eight. You see, philosopher or Fangu, and you wake up and you find. Seat three is dead. Seat eight is dead. So three died to their own game. Oh, and seat 11 is also dead. There's three deaths. Ooh, three deaths. So there's a godfather, which I already suspected. Balloonist godfather. So what do you, but first, like, what do you think of your dream on seat eight? All right, so what did I get? I got Philo or Fangu. Mm-hmm. So I've seen two Fangus, which means both of those players can't be evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, C3 says, by the way, I think... Oh, sorry, let me think. Let you finish it. Yeah, sorry. I'm just thinking about it. Um, so one of the two of them doesn't have to even be the Fangu. The Fangu doesn't have to even be in play. Um, but at least one of them is good because I was shown the same evil for both of them. Mm-hmm. The... You know, the grandmother wanting to get killed, the grandmother getting fed to a cannibal, to a Philo cannibal, grandmother seeing a Philo, and the Philo then seeing another player. I mean, it's a lot of confirmation there, so that player is more believable, but it does look like a Fangu jump has happened with three deaths here this late. So many outsiders. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Godfather could be bluffing an outsider. The balloonist could be real, and there could be a legitimate vigor in a godfather plus one, balloonist plus one, vigor minus one. That would be three outsiders with the godfather bluffing one to get us to three or four. It looks like we at least have three on the grim. Oh, this savant is probably a lunatic, um, although he's getting more and more godfather looking from by the second. If it's a vigor, uh, seat four could have been the godfather as well. Okay. 
Uh, I'll tell you that you get three points of that answer. I think that covered a lot of the different possibilities. There. Yeah, unfortunately, the possibilities aren't narrowing very much here, um, which is a problem. Here's one. Uh, C3 says, uh, hello, gambler. Gambled milk is the widow because we all thought he was the widow. Died. I guess milk's just telling the truth, which makes me think C5 probably evil. Yeah, seat five's probably evil here. Um, we should just kill seat five, probably the widow. I uh, do you want to talk to? You haven't talked to seat eleven or seat nine. I, I, I talked to seat eleven. I would I would want to talk to eleven and nine just to finish out the grim, since the since the folks at home might want to see what else they claim. Seat eleven says, "Yeah, uh, fortune teller makes a lot of sense. I died in the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, three kills feels like a that demon change, right? Mm, I don't think it has to be a." demon change here. I think it can be a gambler dying, a godfather kill off the recluse getting killed, and then the just the regular demon kill. Yeah, I guess that's possible too. So you're not thinking that a demon change then? No, I mean, it's possible the storyteller could be signaling with three kills, but with this many ways for players to die, and after we killed an outsider... It seems more likely that the storyteller would kill no one in the situation of a pit hag change because this doesn't really signal that much to us. It's still too much in the probable worlds, the possible worlds. The storyteller might have to kill four players here to signal a uh, pit hag change with uh, with killing players. So killing no uh, one would be more likely. Uh, the C eleven says, "Yeah, but what if um so C three gambled you incorrectly and died, right?" Mm-hmm. And then the pit hag changed the demon. The storyteller is in a tough spot because there's one death that's already happened that they can't undo. So what if they killed two more people as the next best thing is the signal? Yeah, there's no way to. I mean, there's no way to tell the difference. Killing two people there after we kill a after we kill a outsider. There's so many outsider claims on the grim. It could be, could be either. But with so many outsider claims, it would seem to be already uh, maybe a fangu. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. This is just really hard to read it. They go, all right, well, uh, yeah, my fortune teller yeses are on 5 and 10, my no is on 9 and 7, and of course I didn't get a third night of information. 9 and 7 are no's? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Mm, that could be a fortune teller red herring on the lunatic to make them look more like the demon. I think the investigator's still just evil. Okay. Uh, talk to seat nine real quick, just to just to finish. Yeah, that. they go. Sorry, I'm not going to share my info yet. I'm still working through it, but I am the savant. Oh, great! You're the actual savant. Yeah. That makes seat ten more likely to be the lunatic and the I red. I thought they herring. were claiming Amni. Uh oh, maybe they were. I don't know. I had them marked as savant. I think they were claiming Amni, but they're the lunatic anyway, probably. So. Okay. I'm not sure. Lunatic or Godfather could be the Godfather still. All right. Well, there's a lot of interest in killing seat five today. Do you gonna, are you going to vote? Yeah, I'll it? vote on seat five. All right. So when it gets to you, seat six, seven, nine, and ten have all already voted. You add six, your fifth vote. Six, seven, nine, and ten have already voted. Yep. Do you add your fifth vote? Wait a minute. Six, seven, nine, and ten all voted together. Yeah, all four of them voted on the investigator claim seat five. Oh no, I definitely don't want to vote on that. All right. I mean, it's still going up with four votes. Yeah. Okay, so four votes. Do you make another nomination? Um, yeah, I still want to kill seat seven. The information doesn't track, and I think seat five might be the widow poison. Okay. Do you nominate them? Yeah, I'll nominate seat seven. Okay, so you nominate seat seven, you make your argument, it doesn't get... Not going to get enough votes anyway. Not going to get enough votes. Yep. All right. Feed five executed guys, and you go to sleep, Milk. And the storyteller wakes you up tonight and tells you that you are the Fangu. Yeah, that makes some sense, I guess. So, uh, it's your final point opportunity, and you've gotten some points along the way. Uh, do you want to tell me who used your evil team? Um, it can't be C10 because C10 was in a yes. Oh, you learned you learned that C10 is the lunatic as well. I learned so. that C10 is the lunatic. Yeah, so it can't be C10 anyway because C10 is just a red herring for the fortune teller who's dead. Um, six isn't the demon because they're claiming outsider to start with. 
Seven, I think seven is just the fang goo. If it was a pit hag change, seven is a minion and nine is the fang goo. If it's not a pit hag change, then um, nine is the fang goo. Or if it's not a pit hag change, then seven is the fang goo and nine is the, no, I'm the drunk. So I wouldn't be shown. Uh, so it's nine. Nine is the nine is the demon, and or nine is the form. Nine is the former demon. Who else is on your team? So it was a vigor chain. So it was a vigor that got changed into a fangu. So that means that three is on my team. They were the correct ping, which means that the investigator's not poisoned. Sorry, I'm just thinking through it. Um, so the investigator's not poisoned. State three was the widow. They were the correct ping. I got the oh whatever. Um, I don't know where the Godfather is. They were probably vigor killed. Oh, there can't be a Godfather. Yeah, there can't be a Godfather. There has to be a Pit hag, because the demon got changed. Huh? I mean, you have to sort of pick one. You can either believe in a pit hag demon change, or you can believe in a godfather. Well, the widow died at night uh, on a pit hag. The C three died at night on a pit hag change. So maybe that. I think C three is evil. I think C three is the widow. I don't think I have room for the pit hag in this world, so I think it's a starting Fangu world, in which case seat 9 is the starting Fangu, who will be dead when I wake up. Seat 3 is the widow, and then there's a godfather out there, so it's seat 6, probably bluffing sweetheart. Okay, well, you get three points because seat 9 is, in fact, the Fangu who jumped to you. Mm -hmm. You also get three points for when you correctly said that seat 5 was widow poisoned during this game. They were. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, got that wrong. So, you get three points for that, so that brings you up to 14. So see, three's not the widow. You get zero points for your th theory that three, seven, and ten were evil. They were all good. Interesting. So three actually... The lunatic, the... the mutant, and the gambler. Oh, right. The gamble doesn't work because I'm the drunk. That's dumb. That's a mistake. <laughs> well, you also gambled as the widow. Right, right. Yeah. I, yeah. You were you started the game as the dreamer. You were pit-hagged into the drunk night, too. No, I don't know where the pit-hag is, then. Uh, I guess it's seat six. And that was seat 11, with all their... Oh, they died with the pit egg change. They, oh, they died with the pit egg change, and they were worried that people would read it as such, and excited when you weren't accepting that theory. Hmm. That's a tough spot for the storyteller to be in, certainly. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough spot because the gamblers already died, so they can't signal the the starting imp in seat 9 was changed into a fangu with zero deaths because someone's already died in the night, so they killed two more instead, including the pit hag. So where's the... Widow. So the widow is in seat six. The widow's in seat twelve, just like the Philo Cannibal told you. Oh wow! Well, I had that the seat totally twelve right. was the bluffing, the widow bluffing recluse, and was playing with you. They were it's because they knew you were going to be put into the drunk that night, hmm. and that the storyteller could show them anything. Still found the demon. You did find the demon. <laughs> I would have found out the next day. I would have found out the next day though, but. <laughs> and you're in a pretty good spot here because it's you and the three starting outsiders. So, a lot of reasons to believe that, though it's going to be a little weird when you don't die in the night. Uh, but there's only four of us left, so they always just leave it this way. I was already sussed earlier. Yeah. There's not a lot I can, I mean, there's not, there's nothing I can do about that. They've left me in this situation. They would have been better off jumping to one of the other outsiders, probably, but. Probably. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. So 14 points is a good solid showing for this scenario. I'll give you a certificate for that. I should I should have figured out the should have figured out the minions, but it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you sometimes you don't quite get it right. All right, we're gonna move on to scenario two. All right, let's uh, take our little break and we'll swap out. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our evil scenario here for catfishing, and it's it's fun that Emma had us do Fangu in the previous game because Emma, you are in fact the Fangu. Oh, fun! Now, 
Is Milk taking his revenge when I made him the lunatic? Well, I'm going to give you some starting information, and then we're going to just move ahead a little bit. Um, so, Emma, I'm going to give you some useful bits of information, and I'm going to put them on the grim here while I give them to you. Uh, the player in seat 9 next to you is your minion, and they are the Serenovus. Mm-hmm. The player in seat two is also a minion, and they are the Pit Hag. Mm -hmm. And the player in seat four is your lunatic. Oh, Sag. So you're not the lunatic, you're just the Fangu, Emma. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang nabbit. <laughs> so let's, let's talk just for a moment about Fangu Lunatic. Because some people really like Fangu with Lunatic, and some people really hate Fangu with Lunatic. So, what's what's the problem? What are the problems, and what are the benefits of Fangu with Lunatic? So the the benefits is you know a seat to jump to. The problems is it's a really obvious jump, um, and it's a really easy jump. So I think some people think it's too strong for evil. I actually think it's too strong. I think. I think having a lunatic as a Fangu is good for evil. I think jumping to your lunatic is a bit of a uh, that's bait gif. How come? Because the lunatic's going to figure it out. So you either have to jump to them super early, which is rarely optimal. You want to make your jump late. You, or and you want to jump to someone who's going to be prepping for the possibility of a Fangu jump on a Fangu script, not someone who's going to be realizing halfway through that they're actually an outsider. Because the person who realizes halfway through that they're actually an outsider is more likely to out that in their frustration at learning that they're the lunatic, whereas the sweetheart or reckless or mutant is going to be preparing for the jump, and Godspeed the drunk has an actual town's of fluff built in. What a beautiful jump. That's that's the ideal, is to find the drunk. Yes, the ideal is to find the drunk. Or make the drunk. The lunatic is sort of a option of last resort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, the other thing I can tell you, Emma, is that uh, on day one, uh, the town all agreed to execute the player in seat 11, who simply came out and said, I'm the grandmother. Seems, seems quite familiar. Uh... So the grandmother in seat 11 was executed. Uh, and so it's it's night two. Um, you've had a few conversations. I will let you pick two players to have had conversations with, and I will tell you something about them. Hmm. Obviously, you had to talk. You obviously had to talk to both of your. Minions. Yeah, I was going to say, like, in something in this script that's really important is actually coordinating with your evil team. Mm -hmm. This is a script where the evil team is a synchronous machine, where if they're all just going off YOLOing, doing their solo stuff, evil's going to be a real struggle. But if they work together, um, evil's going to be brutal. And obviously the penalty for coordination is people might notice you're talking to each other a lot. Right. So you do want to talk early, set up a plan, check in on the plan, see how things are going. Currently, the... Currently, the... Uh... Pit Hag and Saranovis are going to try to uh, make a mutant explode. That is their current plan. Well, I don't like that plan. All right. Well, what plan do you want? I want the seat two to try to make a drunk. You want seat two to make a drunk. Okay. Yeah. Where would you like the drunk? Uh, it doesn't super matter. Okay. Great. I'm not killing the drunk tonight. I'm killing them tomorrow night to see if I successfully made the drunk. All right, sounds good. So, what two players do you want info from? Uh, let's go with seat six and seat twelve. Okay, uh, you talk to the player in seat twelve, and the player in seat twelve says, um, "I'm the fortune teller, and yeah, I've got a, I've got a no on night one." Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I'll leave that alone. It could be a raven keeper. But I'm happy to leave Fortune Teller claim alone for now. Okay. Uh, and you talk to Seat 6, and Seat 6 says, uh, I'm the gambler. What can I gamble you as? What are my bluffs? Oh, sure. Your bluffs are Balloonist, Snake Charmer, and Gambler. 
<laughs> I tell them they can gamble me as the gambler. All right. And if they ask if they want to give me a real plan. Uh, nope. I'm the gambler. I go, cool, mutant. <laughs> Very well. Uh, okay. Uh, what, uh, so, uh, with that in mind, uh, what would you like to do on this night? So I'm going to have, hopefully, talk to the panic after I have these conversations. I'm going to ask them to turn C12 into the drunk. Hopefully they're the fortune teller. A drunk fortune teller is great. I'm probably never actually even going to try to jump to them. Like, I would like a drunk fortune teller to just sit around and live in their life. If they happen to be the Raven Keeper, that's a bit sad, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. Mm-hmm. All right, the panic says, sure, I'll make them the drunk. And I will just kill someone. Uh, I'll, kill, I'll follow the lunatic's pick. Doesn't really matter to me. Okay, great. Uh, the lunatic picks the player in seat seven. Yeah, sure. All right. The lunatic picks the player in seat seven. And you follow the lunatic's pick. And the following morning... Oh, we should go out to the Grim. Right. <laughs> and the following morning, Emma, you wake up dead. Oh, Goddamn lunatic. <laughs> so what's what's the problem with Fangu? Everybody loves Fangu. Everybody thinks Fangu is incredibly strong. What's the problem with Fangu? The problem with Fangu is now this is jump has already happened and we have to re-coordinate with a new evil team. It's very sad. We have to try to feed Seat 7 a bluff. It's all very annoying. And how do we go about doing that, is the question. Do we just go talk to Seat 7 immediately? Because you you look over at Seat 7, and on their face on the Grim, they look panicked. No, no, I, whisp- I talk to Seat 9. I whisper in Seat 9's ear, surreptitiously, like, oh, stealthy. In the app, I send a quick text being like, Lunatic picked a goddamn outsider. Seat 7's a new demon. Try to bring them in, let them have Bloomist as a bluff. Uh, okay. Uh, seat, seat 9 says, okay. Seat 8, mad as mutant. I go, cool. <laughs> have fun with your mutant blow up plan. I'm not gonna endorse it. So, without, without going through every day of this while you're dead, Emma. What can the evil team do from this position? So we're going to pass a bluff over to the player in seat seven. Yeah. We're going to tell them to bluff balloonist. Mm-hmm. How, how do we make this work? So the question is, do we want to make it feel like a Fangu game or not? My inclination is at this point with the early jump and giving them a bluff, let's try to make it feel like a Fangu game. So the pit is just going to focus on creating the outsiders. Okay, so you want your you want your pit hag to create face up outsiders. Yeah, so we're gonna figure out what outsider seat seven was. We're gonna have seat two start putting that outsider in next because we know it's out of play. Now you know lunatic is in play. Seat six is almost certainly the mutant based off them being good and claiming gambler. And we've already got a drunk in seat twelve. Hopefully, we have a drunk in seat twelve. This could be wrong. Seat tw- six could be in seat twelve could be doing something else, but that's probably right. Okay, and then. What do the kills need to look like for this to work? Uh, you don't want to kill outsiders. So seat seven wants to kill. Um, first of all, you don't. You want to ignore the lunatic skills from this point on. Um, the lunatic attacked seat seven, and I died. Uh, that's bad for us. In fact, you know, you, you know what, Emma? Why did? Why don't you go sit in seat seven? Oh, you're just stealing my sticks now. I mean. Well, since you're gonna be since you're gonna be controlling this game, it seems like if you just go sit in seat seven, it'll be much easier. No, no, no! You're just stealing my stick. This was my stick to force you to move to the yeah, other seat when you got off go, the demon hood. Just go right over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stick stealing milk, stick stealing. All right, so the, we're gonna try to get the demon hood off seat seven. Actually, this is what we're gonna try to do. So we're gonna do that with a. We're ideally we're gonna do. We have the snake charmer bluff, and so ideally we're gonna do that with the snake charmer bluff. And how are how are we going to set up that play? Because that's a complex play that probably most of the players aren't going to, or most of our listeners aren't necessarily going to know yeah. how to do. So we're going to abandon the make outsider plan. We are going to have the pit egg make Saranovis into a widow. Okay. I'm sorry, you're very unfun. Try to make the mutant explode by making them mad as the mutant shenanigans are over. That's but that's a silly, dumb, unfun play. So I'm happy to see it gone. All right. 
So someone someone dies in night. Let's just kill. Uh, we'll just kill off the lunatic. Town decides to kill. No, the don't kill the lunatic. We need them. Town's gonna kill the lunatic today. No, we didn't vote on them. All three without any of our votes. No. Yeah, no, everybody. No, no. Every other player votes on them. No. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I, you're loathsome, Milk. You're loathsome. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're so the pit hags. You want to kill anyone but outsiders, you god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so the pit hag's making a widow. Yeah, then they're gonna turn the widow into a snake charm. Oh, it takes so long now. They're just gonna drink Saranovas directly into the snake charmer. Turn the Saranovas directly into the snake charmer. Alright, so the, the pit hag is gonna turn the Saranovas directly into the snake charmer. Yeah. Kill anyone who isn't a goddamn outsider is what I'm doing. So, okay. seat three. Well, what outsider did I used to be now that I'm seat seven and you're... Oh, uh, you used to be the sweetheart. Cool. Fun. I'll kill seat three. You kill seat three. Okay. I don't okay. care what they are. Fair enough. You've killed seat three. You don't care what they are. Seat nine is now Can't the snake charmer. goddamn killed the, outside, the freaking lunatic when I was talking about how I wanted to leave outsiders alive. Mm. You still got a few left. You'll be fine. I hate you. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Alright, so we make seat nine the snake charmer. We're gonna do some stuff. So what's gonna happen, assuming you don't screw with me again, Milk, uh, is seat nine's gonna snake charm me next night to get the demon off the person the lunatic tried to kill, because that's dangerous. Seat two's gonna pit hag seat the starting sweetheart Sten Fengu into a widow so they can get poison themselves and get the grim and figure out a safe bluff. Because we've already burned through all of our bluffs. All right. So. That's the plan. So the next night, the snake charmer is going to is going to grab the fangu off of the off of you. Yeah. And then the pit hag is going to change you into the widow. Exactly. That's the plan. Please don't kill my goddamn snake charmer. So who do who who gets killed during the day, Emma? I don't know. That's your job. <laughs> So who do we kill during the day? How do you coordinate this so that you make sure you don't kill one of the important three well, pieces of this puzzle? We're going to try to push on seats one, five, or eight. Okay, so we'll push on seats one, five, or eight, and maybe get one of them killed. Yeah, maybe. Let's say you kill. Let's say you kill seat one. Great. All right. Cool. So the following night, you get snake charmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I get connected into the widow. So, so you you do need to you do need to jump. You do need to jump over to uh, see. Can I get my goddamn Grim first? <laughs> <laughs> so the evil snake charmer has swapped with the with the uh, with the Fangu, and now the Pit Hag is going to change you into the Widow, and I will give you the Grim. Uh, the Grim looks like as follows: uh, the player in seat one was the Cannibal. Okay. And uh, the player in seat. Uh, two is still your pit hag. The player in seat three was the dreamer. The player in seat four, lunatic. The player in seat five. Uh, the player in seat five is the amnesiac. Great. The player in seat six is the mutant. You are the widow, of course. The player in seat eight is the raven keeper. Player in seat nine is the Fangu. The player in seat ten is the Fangu. The player in seat eleven was the grandmother. Uh, the cannibal uh, was the grandchild. So assumedly, there's another grandchild floating around out there uh, from the cannibal, which you don't know about. Uh, and the player in seat twelve uh, is uh, the uh, drunk chef. Mm. Disappointing, but fine. Okay. So. Now you want me to get out of C2 and go no, to C2. No, who would right? you like to poison, Widow? Well, I'm poisoning myself. There's no point in letting the good team know what we're up to. Why, why do you poison yourself? Because there's no point to letting the good team know what we're up to. The only thing worth poisoning here is the amnesiac. Uh, but we want, at this point, to seat 7's job now is to be a meat shield. So we don't really care about preserving this anyway. We don't want to kill seat 6. It's a little sad that seat 12 is actually the chef. It's not a great drunk for us. Yep, it happens. We're going to pit hag seat 8 or seat 5 into the reckless tonight if the pit hag survives today, so we're going to try to push on seat 7. Okay. Um, and that's probably about as far as we need to go, because it's pretty hard to predict what will happen from here out. But I wanted to show what happens when you, 
jump without realizing that you've got that plan in place, and you and you fell right into my trap. <laughs> yeah. So just to go through the rest of our plan, our plan is to get the widow poison killed today because they're like the fact that the people are eventually going to track that what happened was seat ten jumped to seat seven on the night they followed the lunatics kills. Yeah, and the lunatics probably socially been pushing on seat seven for quite a while because they didn't get killed. Yeah. Uh, people are going to track that that's what happened. It's going to be fine. We want seat seven to die. We want we don't want seat two to die because we want seat two to create a recluse on seat eight and then turn themselves into the godfather. They have X dying tonight. Sorry, I'm a friend. Yeah. With this level yeah. of complexity in a script, with the amount of moving around and jumping to other players and changing characters, it 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 is a little bit artificial. It's hard for us to sort of predict what players will do in this space. But the critical thing, I think, and I think you'll probably agree, Emma, and maybe you can speak to it a little bit, is you can't just assume that one Fangu jump is going to sort the game for you. On this script, on SNV as well, right, one Fangu jump, it's probably trackable. Yeah, so our goal is to sort of move the Fangu, get the Raven Keeper turned into a recluse because it's too late in the game to pop a Raven Keeper, kill off the Amnesiac, then, if the Pitag can survive the next day, turn them into a godfather. If we kill anyone who's not me, we each kill the person closest to us mm-hmm. and win the game. Yep. That's the plan. That's the plan. It may not work, but that's that's the line. Yep, that's the, that's the line of play. And, you know, there's so many road bumps that you can encounter. There's so many places where it can change or go wrong. Right? Your lunatic dies. You have less outsiders to work with. Right? There's a lot of possibilities here. But the crucial thing on this script is how much the evil team can do with coordination. Yeah. You can't be afraid to talk to your team. Right. With that, I think we're pretty much wrapped up for this week. Yeah. Nice two, nice two little scenarios. Uh, we definitely yeah, aren't Milk about to earned go. earned his second certificate. Two certificates. I don't know what they do, but I bet it's something fun. And we're definitely not about to go record another episode of Grim Scenarios right now. We're definitely going to continue on on our evenings and go do fun things, or I'm going to go back to work, or whatever it is that we do with our time. Probably, I just go back to sleep. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's all according to plan. Let's go talk. Uh... All right. Uh, with that, I hope your scenarios stay grim. We probably didn't need to come in here to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we probably didn't, but we did. <laughs>